All right, how's everyone doing? So for today, we're gonna pick up where we left off. Uh, we had already assembled the input assembly completely and uh, had gotten all of the components back in after an inspection. Now what we're going to do is we're actually gonna measure the clutch pack clearance for the input drum. Um, now the way that we're going to be doing that is the most accurate way that the factory calls for it. And that is to measure it dynamically in the drum itself. So the difference between actually like taking the clutch pack out and measuring it with veneer calipers versus actually measuring it in this fashion is that we're able to check the entire circuit and how it sits in the drum as well as how it reacts to the reaction plate um, and, and get a feel for what the actual clutch clearance is. So the method to do so is to use a dial indicator against one of the edges of the top clutch disc. So my dial indicator doesn't happen to have the long narrow um, pointer uh, like the factory calls for. So what I do is I go off this little edge right here and that's accurate enough. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply pneumatic pressure to the hydraulic circuit to be able to engage this up. So what I've done is I've actually regulated down my air gun so that it's as minimal amount of air pressure as you possibly can. We're gonna be measuring the overdrive, or sorry, the underdrive clutch first. It's the farthest one down in the drum. Um, this is the one that, that allows the entire drum assembly to shoot up. So I have the pressure regulated to around 30 PSI. It's just enough to be able to activate the clutch. So with the dial indicator set up and set to zero, we need to look at the factory specifications, which the spec factory specifications for this particular clutch is anywhere between 36 thousandths and 58 thousandths. The tighter the clutch, so the closer we are to 36 thousandths, the newer the clutch material is and the thicker the material is to where the closer to the um, looser edge is going to be a worn out clutch or a clutch with uh, a lack of material. So if we were on the higher end of it, that would make sense in this case because we have a used clutch pack. The higher you go, the more likely the clutch pack is worn out, the needing for it to be replaced. Now, the other way, the tighter it is, that could indicate something's bent, something's out of order, the wrong steels are used or the wrong clutch discs are used. On this particular transmission, the input clutches for this entire input drum are basically all the same. So that's not typically an issue that you, you're normally gonna have, but on other transmissions that might be the case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to this port right here because this is our hydraulic circuit port for the underdriven clutch and we're gonna watch for it activating the clutch. So I have the dial indicator set to zero. So with air applied and we can actually see that, you know, the clutch disc right now has some play down at the bottom we can actually see it activate and lift up. So we're right at about, with full pressure, 43 thousandths, 43, 44 thousandths, roughly. Let's see, it is a little bit too much pressure. So with 43 thousandths, we're right in the dead center middle of, uh, of our specification. So that is an in-spec clutch pack. Now, what that would indicate is as long as it's not overheated, or varnished, we can reuse um, that clutch pack if necessary. So now we're gonna move on to the overdrive. Okay, so now I've reinstalled the overdrive clutch pack with the two hub assemblies removed. Uh, that gives us access to be able to reach all of the different clutch discs. So I've readjusted the dial indicator to be reading um, down onto the overdrive. Clutches. So this is actually gonna actuate down. We're gonna go through this hydraulic port and we're gonna see what the actual spec is. Now going to factory specifications, our overdrive clutch should be between 19 and 92 thousandths of an inch. So we have a pretty big window that we can go in for that. So again, regulating this down to about 30 PSI. We're roughly, we're right at about the limit of 19 thousandths, 18 thousandths. So this clutch pack is a tad bit tight. So our spec is between 19 and 92. We're right at about 18, 17, depending on exactly where we're getting to. Now that one to two thousandths 
um, different, I'm gonna say, is probably due to that these clutches are used and they're swollen a little bit with fluid. So I'm not too concerned with that, only because of the fact that knowing that that wasn't the issue with this particular transmission we were diagnosed. But we're getting to that point where, okay, potentially something's bent, potentially this uh, reaction plate is warped, the drum could be warped, we could have incorrect steels, so on and so forth. So it is okay to use, but we are getting towards that uh, outer limit of being used. So now what we'll do is we will uh, set up for reverse, and that'll be the last clutch we're gonna inspect for this drum. All right, so now we're down to our third and final clutch, our reverse clutch pack. Factory specification for this clutch pack is 30 to 49 thousandths of an inch. So we're gonna go through this port right here, applying 30 PSI of air pressure, be able to check to see if we're engaging it. So right there, we're roughly 30 PSI. You can get an idea of actually watching because this one's up top of the clutch activation and the clutch is being collapsed when the pneumatic pressure is applied to it. So with it being roughly 30 thousandths of an inch, again, we're right at about the tight end of this clutch pack. We'd be looking for a warped drum, a warped reaction plate, um, bent clutches or steels as well. It is still within specification, so we're okay to reuse this. Um, other than that, what we then go on to do is after the inspection of the clutch discs, the steels, seals, and the drum assembly itself, we would then determine if this is rebuildable. Going off of all three of these clutch pack clearances that we've measured, they are technically reusable. Um, they didn't look too hot, and they could uh, spend another couple thousand miles of use in the transmission. Personally, I would replace them. Um, it's one of those things to where if you're already in here, you might as well go through and replace them and have it be fresh and new. Um, the fact that these clutch discs are swollen with, with fluid also will increase how much clearance they will actually take up. So other than that, the next step would be to reassemble this clutch drum with the two hub assemblies for the overdrive hub and our underdrive hub set this aside and then we can go on into the main case of the transmission which is going to include the planetary gear sets the braking clutches the valve body and the compounder assembly so we'll do that in another video i appreciate everyone taking the time to watch this and we'll see you in the next one